Hey guys, it's Kathleen and today we're going to be talking about how I read during the school year. Now this video is not just applicable to you if you are a student, honestly, if you work or you just have a busy life in general, then these tips can apply to you as well. But I'm a full-time student, I work a part-time job, and I'm just a generally busy human. I make YouTube videos, all that stuff. So I don't always have tons of time to fit reading in and these are the ways I've been able to do it thus far. Now I will say, in my previous two years of school, I sucked at reading for fun. I was literally the worst. I never read books for fun. I really only did it on breaks and things like that. Now my first year I was in a program that required a lot of intensive reading. We had readings every single week and they were books. It was multiple books a week and so that sucked. <laughs> um, and I really didn't have time to read for fun then. And then last year I think I was just horrible at planning my schedule so I would never read for fun. But just this past year so far at least I've gotten a lot better at it so these are the tips that have worked for me so far. Now the first tip I have is super super standard and everyone pretty much who's made this kind of video has said it but always carry a book with you. Always wherever you are going make sure you have a book in your bag in some form that you can just whip out if you need it because someday you're going to be at the dentist or doctors whatever or you're going to have a bus ride or you're going to be waiting for a bus and you're just going to need something to do and you're going to need a book and having that book just so you can fit another 10 minutes of reading time is so so useful instead of just scrolling through Facebook or whatever you would have been doing otherwise you can get a bit of reading time in and it's so so helpful. So the second tip which is kind of connected to the first tip I have for you guys is to try ebooks. Now I know some people really don't like ebooks they like the physical feel of books and most of the time I'm that way but I've kind of gotten over that a bit mainly because I've realized just how convenient ebooks are. But what you may think based on the first tip I'm not actually the best at carrying a book with me everywhere but I do carry my phone with me wherever I go. I always always make sure I have my phone with me in case of emergencies and what I've discovered is that having the Kindle reading app has really helped me a lot. Do you guys know that commercial with that woman who tells you to download the free Kindle reading app? I just I hate that woman's voice. Anyway just an aside. But having that app has really helped me so much. I get so much more reading time in when I just have this arc from NetGalley or something like that and then I can just scroll through the app and just read as I please. And it also makes me feel like I'm going through books faster because it'll say 4,000 pages but then every like six page is a page. So then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm reading the book so quickly. I finished three books in the last month in this way so it's definitely a super, super useful thing to have. The other thing is that you don't necessarily need to spend a ton of money on them. Like there are deals you can get on Amazon I think where ebooks will be $1.99 they're also a lot cheaper in general and if you are a book blogger booktuber librarian bookseller any of that you can get a NetGalley account and they send books to your Kindle and then you can get ARCs which is super awesome and a super super easy way of doing it so yes definitely get a Kindle app if you can so the next tip I have for you guys is another very very common one and that is audiobooks. I know another thing is that a lot of people don't like audiobooks and I would say give them a chance. Some people I think assume they're going to dislike them and I know some people have tried them and just genuinely don't like them and that's fine but some people kind of are a bit judgmental about it I think and think that it's just not as good and I think you really should give them a shot because they're so useful for getting reading done when you have so many other things to do. I listen to audiobooks while I exercise. I listen to them while I'm doing dishes and cleaning. I saw one person say they listen to them while they're coloring just to relax. And if you drive places, you can listen to them on your commute. I think that tends to be who audiobooks are most popular with, people who have to drive a lot of places and they have to commute to work. But definitely if you were someone who drives everywhere, then listen to audiobooks. They are so useful and there's so many good ones out there. And it's so easy to get yourself wrapped up in the story after a while. I personally listen to mine at 1.25 speed, which I find is the max I can listen to it without feeling kind of weird hearing the story. But there are people who listen to them at two times the speed or one and a half the speed and they find that helps them get through it a lot faster. So if you're someone who can do that, then definitely do that. It'll make it go by so much faster. So next I'm going to suggest you guys that you start taking the bus if you can. Now if you're someone who has to commute every single day to work and you have to do that, that's totally fine. But if you're a student, then try taking the bus. You get so much done. You get so much time for reading, which is so good. Even if it's not necessarily like reading for fun, you get school readings done. The bus is so useful. I'm someone who can read on the bus. I know there are people who can't, so I've really used that to my advantage. But if you can, take the bus, put in some music, do whatever you have to do to be able to read on the bus. You get so much done and it's such a great feeling when you've gotten that half an hour of reading in and you didn't even have to do anything that day. It's so great. So next I have a very hit or miss suggestion. Sometimes this works for me, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm going to say try to get up early. I know for some people getting up early is really, really difficult and I understand that. 
for me, I'm very hit or miss. I go through periods where I really want to get up early and I'm like super motivated and I want to like change my life and be a whole new person. And I want to read in the mornings and I want to have delicious breakfast, whatever. And most of the time I'm not that person. <laughs> and I imagine probably most of you aren't that person all the time, but there is something to being able to get up early and just have your breakfast and read for half an hour, 20 minutes, whatever. You get a bit of reading done and it just feels so good and you feel like you've done something really nice to open up your day. It's great to not feel unhappy in the morning and not be grumpy and I think reading can definitely help with that. So yeah, try getting up early if you can. Anyway, you were just going to be sleeping during that time period and you might not get that much late in the evening done. So you might as well get up early and read a little bit if you can. The next suggestion is to give yourself some deadlines. So there are a couple ways you can do this. The first I would suggest is to stop buying so many books. I know that hurts, but if you're somebody who buys books all the time and you just throw them on your shelves and eventually you become overwhelmed and you really have no time period with which to read them in, then you're probably not going to get to them for a really long time. But if you are somebody who has a library card and you only take out a couple books at a time that you think you'll have the time to read or that you'll renew if you don't, then you'll probably get a lot more done. I haven't tested the library card method tons myself only because I do have so many books on my TBR as you can see but there is that deadline if you have a library card so if you take out something from the library and you want to read it then you're probably a lot more likely to finish it. The other suggestion is to get a Nut Galley account. Now this applies to you probably mostly if you're a booktuber a book blogger, a librarian, a bookseller, like I mentioned before, but it's nice to get ARCs because then you kind of see that and you think, okay, this is the time I need to read it by. This is when I need to provide feedback and a review. And that's what I've committed to doing. And you're more to find time to fit that in if you have that. So that's a really good option. If you are somebody who promotes books in any kind of way, then if there are books you're excited about and you want to talk about any way, then you can request them on NetGalley. And then potentially you'll get an ARC and then you can read it in time and you won't just buy it when it comes out and then put it on your shelf to never be read again. If you are a student and you have required readings, try to take classes that are going to have readings that are going to be fun. Especially if you're taking English classes or anything like that, take ones that have an interesting list. I'm in a class right now called Children's Lit and though some of the books are kind of boring, there's also going to be some fun ones. We're doing Harry Potter, we did Alice in Wonderland, we're doing Animal Farm, weirdly enough. We're doing some interesting books I've always wanted to read. So if there's a class offering books that talks about books you've always wanted to read, then take the class and see where it leads you because you'll probably have to get more of that done. Even if you don't read all of them you'll probably read some of them and that's always helpful and if you can try to get some enjoyment of your required readings try not to just see them as boring and just being done just because you have to do them try to have fun try to treat them like a normal book and you'll find that helps you a lot more this next tip I've never found works for me but I have seen a lot of people it works for so I'm gonna mention it briefly anyway and that is to set reading times for yourself if you are somebody who likes a schedule, then you might like to have 20 minutes at the end of the day, 20 minutes at the beginning of your day, whatever, to just read and do your thing and have that time for yourself. I'm a more spontaneous person. I don't really like to do that. So I am somebody who that doesn't really work for, but I know lots of people, it really does work for them. They really, really like to read, say, half an hour before bed, and they do that every single day, and they find that really helps them. And you will definitely get reading done that way. I'm just not somebody who it works for, but it might very well work for you. And then next, I want to say to just be present and aware of the moment. Just take notice of the times when you have time to read. Like I said before, if you are at the bus stop or something like that and you have a book, take that moment. Don't just sit there and listen to your iPod. I mean, do it if you want to and who has an iPod anyway. But if you do have a book to read, then read. And if you are up a bit early one day, then read for a few minutes. Take those moments and those opportunities. If you're doing a commute, put on an audiobook. Get an Overdrive account, by the way. If you want to get audiobooks, then you'll have to have an Audible subscription. Take those opportunities and those times and really recognize and just be hyper aware of where they exist. And then my final, final tip for you guys is to not be afraid of DNFing books. So if you don't know, DNFing stands for did not finish and it means you just didn't like a book and you didn't want to continue. And it's something that I think a lot of people are afraid to do. I know I don't like to DNF a book unless I really, really hate it. I have to strongly dislike a book to really think it's not worth continuing with at all. And I know a lot of people feel the same way, but I'd say if you're trying to read more, don't force yourself through a book you completely hate because it'll take you two months to finish it. And suddenly two months have gone by and you've only read one book. So don't be afraid to say either, I don't like this book. I'm going to put it aside and not finish it. Or I'm going to get back to this and read something I know I'm going to enjoy more. Don't be afraid of that because it'll help you get 
so much more reading done and you'll feel so much happier with your reading and what you've read. So those are all my tips for how to read more as a student. If you're not a student, I think a lot of these can apply to you as well. If you're just somebody who has a busy life, then these can go for you too. This is just my own personal experience being a student and how I personally try to read more. I'm doing so much better this year and I'm so proud of myself just for being able to read more and being committed to that. It makes me really happy. So yeah. So thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe on your way out if you're new here. I upload videos every Tuesday and Friday with occasional bonus uploads throughout the week as I please. You're probably seeing a lot of tag videos this week and those are the kinds of bonus uploads I'm talking about. If you would like to follow me on any of my social medias, links will all be in the description. But in the meantime, I will see you guys next time.